Uh, g'day preppers. Yeah, just uh, thought I'd uh, do my first video on uh, my prepping and uh, start off with my pantry. And um, yeah, I've been prepping for, a, for probably about two and a half years or so, uh, maybe a little bit longer. And um, you know, uh, I thought, oh well, since I've been you know prepping for so long, I thought I might just um, you know start to do a few prepping videos um, of my idea of prepping for um, she did the fan and and um, yeah so um, well first I just want to start off with um, my idea of, of prepping and, and, and why I'm prepping is uh, apart from just normal day-to-day -day living um, you know um, I'm not you know really into you know absolute Armageddon type of prepping um, more so um, financial disaster kind of prepping um, that's one thing that I do feel strongly about is that uh, um, the world economy isn't isn't all that crash hot and uh, I think it's only time that um, we're going to be in for some serious changes in the world and uh, um, so yeah I, I believe that you know prepping a little bit to um, you know, to sort of uh, keep ahead of um, the pack um, is is a good idea. And so, um, yeah, so uh, my prepping is, uh, you know, it obviously starts in a pantry, but it it extends to a whole lot of aspects. And so this is just uh, one aspect of my prepping. Um, one thing you won't find in, um, in any of my videos in the future of prepping for shit at the fan is um things on weapons and stuff um i'm based in australia and uh, we have gun laws here and you know to tell you the truth i haven't even i've never even held a gun in my life and i don't really intend to now um but uh guns aren't legally obtainable in australia um the only way you can get a gun is by you know being a shooter or, or a farmer um you know and you need to be licensed and so on so it's not just a matter of um, walking into Kmart and buying yourself a, a shotgun uh, it just doesn't happen here in Australia um, for the average person so uh, but you know th that it's probably the first and last time you're ever hear me talk about guns and weapons in general um, that's that's for um, everyone else that's into them so yeah, I'm basically um, interested in prepping food, uh, living sustainably. Um, so it extends outside into the garden uh, with chickens and uh, growing vegetables, fruit trees, um, and other kinds of prepping. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to give a, a basic rundown of my pantry and uh, just to show you, you know, um, sort of. Uh, a little bit of where I'm at. I'm, I want to do a whole lot of series of videos on my pantry and how I, um, what I prep, why I prep, and how I prepare those foods for to actually eat. Because, you know, like a, a lot of people that have um, that I'm noticing that have been prepping for a few years now, uh, you'll find that most of them have gone from, you know, prepping for 20 years worth of food to uh, looking at it more realistically and prepping for, um, you know, lifestyle and, and, and not just having food for the sake of storing food. Um, if you uh, don't eat rice, then there's it's pretty pointless storing a whole heap of rice um, because, you know, part of uh, surviving in um, any kind of, you know, situation um mental survival is just as important as physical survival so you know if you're not into rice and that's what you've prepped then um you're not going to be very happy about eating rice after about two weeks believe me <laughs> um, i've tried eating rice on a more of a regular basis i just can't do it i just don't like it i like fried rice that's about that's about where I'm at, you know. I'll make a fried rice every couple of weeks, and that's 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 all I'm happy with. Uh, and there's other foods like that, um, especially in pan pantry type of foods. Um, not all the foods are, are foods that I really really enjoy. So I stock according to how I eat it, rather than just 
for the sake of uh, stocking. Um, anyway, so uh, yeah, I just wanted to talk a little bit about my 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 pantry at the moment. It's it's been it's run down a little bit. I've had it really stocked up at times, and I've used stuff down, and um, I'm kind of in the process of restocking a lot of uh, things that I've been using. Um, and you might notice my my pantry um, shelving is made up of um, milk crates and uh, pieces of plywood. And um, yeah, I find that you know, like I said, this this shelf here is uh, over two years old, and it's uh, served me well. And uh, one of the good things about so this is uh, my mixed vinegars. Um, so you can see this. Uh, um, this uh, milk crate acts as a, as a pillar and it's a very strong pillar but if you get the crates with the one side open where you normally get the milk out of then it also acts as part of the shelf where you can you know stock my vinegars and so on you know so yeah um, that's basically it and and then I, I've uh, last year I extended a second shelf um, basically the same principle you know uh, um, milk crates this time I started off with two milk crate height because I'm pretty tall and so I found with this one here sort of getting down right down to the bottom here it was you know pretty awkward to get stuff so I the second stage of shelving I decided to start them off two, uh, two crates high and then go up like that and so as you can see the pillar is uh, is also um, part of the shelving system. Uh, you've got baked beans. And then a, a third kind of shelving system that I started, a bit lazy, uh, but it's basically just milk crates stacked up. And so it just adds, you know, it's just one, one um, shelf, you know, one rack of um, milk crates. And it, it kind of does the same thing. So long as you don't have too much uh, um, heavy stuff in in the top ones, um, they work just as well. So yeah, so uh, basically, you know, pretty much the same kind of thing that most people would stock. You know, I've got my uh, uh, endless supply of uh, honey here, um, which I bought at the right time. Uh, honey has jumped up a lot in price since I've bought this, so. Uh, um, yeah, I'm happy with this. My, uh, most of the honey now is is on the verge of uh, use by. So actually, this one's expired the 5th of June. It's currently uh, September, so July, August, September. Three months out of date. And as you know, as long as your honey is uh, being stored in, in, in a good climate, like in this room, it's pretty cool most of the time. Um, uh, you can see the honey is nice and brown still that hasn't gone white or anything this will stay for years and i don't really use that much honey anymore as much as i used to uh, i like a little bit in tea sometimes but um yeah not as much as i used to anyway and uh yeah so the things that sort of uh that i like to prep are things that um i basically use day to day like obviously coffees um you know big jars of Makona um, you know stuff that I'm actually using and, and I've kind of worked out a good system where not to not to get too crazy in buying too much um, of anything um, you know like uh, here this is basically my little snack area and uh, there's not much here there's a couple of packets of chips and, you know a bit of uh, chocolate um, things like that uh, yeah, I'm not big on cereal either. Uh, recently, <laughs> I bought a whole lot of uh, sauerkraut. Um, I actually don't mind sauerkraut, in, mostly in winter when I'm cooking, uh, you know, barbecuing um, sausages. I like a bit of sauerkraut on them. I got these for really cheap, so I, I stocked up heaps of them. They've got uh, two years use-by date on them. So these ones will go to 2017. I'll, I can use these up pretty easily by then. And my idea is to um, get enough um, that will last me until the next special. So um, hopefully in six months or even 12 months time, this, these will come on special again. These were like 70% off 
when I find that special again, I'll stock up again and uh, and start consuming more of them. Um, so, yeah, most of my, my stuff is um, everyday use stuff. You know, your standard noodle kind of things, different kinds of noodles and um, soup kind of things. Yeah, this is a um, chicken soup kind of uh, uh, like a stock. It's a good starter for a chicken noodle soup. Uh, some cup of soups and then some um, uh, just your mixed kind of uh, things like green split peas, uh, red lentils, black beans, uh, yellow split peas, basically all soup ingredients. Uh, this, this section's gone down a lot, um, but I'm pretty happy with that because now if the, you know, this kind of stuff in packets is really cheap anyway. So I, I'll you know stock up quite a lot of this later on in the future. Um, and then, um, okay, so, and then uh, down here I've got, you know, my pastas. And again, I'm not a big pasta eater. I don't mind pasta from time to time. So, um, so yeah, I, I've, I, I always maintain a few packets there, you know. Um, uh, beetroot is uh, something that I use quite often. So I can have up to 40 cans of beetroot at any time usually. Um, as I mentioned, rice, I'm not big on rice. These two uh, are 10 kilo bags. Um, so I, I'm just keeping these as kind of like a long-term storage where, but you know, I'm not into like storing food, like trying to make it last for 10 or 15 years. You know, this food, it's all, you know, going to be used by, roughly by the use by date. Um, and, and, and that's it. So, uh, yeah, um, I don't really particularly want to eat, be eating rice in 15 years time uh, because I have to, you know, I'd rather just, uh, you know, store it, you know, 20 kilos of rice is what, um, oh, geez, 20 kilos of rice is about 45 pounds of rice. Um, the, the, you know, that's, you know, if anything went down, um, she'd hit the fan. Um, I've got enough rice here to to um to do me and uh, yes i know that rice is a good filler you can throw it into soups you can put it into stews anything and just add a bit more more to it um especially things like this these um campbell's chunky um yeah i i i don't mind these campbell's chunky soups so i stock a lot of them i don't really eat eat them that often um but this is my you know one of my um ideas on um prepping for you know long-term storage because you know i i like you all know you know these cans will will you know you can stay for many many years and um they'll be fine as long as you know you keep an eye on you know whether they're um gone bulgy or or you know rusty or anything um so yeah uh i I don't mind stocking these, these, even though I don't eat them that often. Uh, sometimes when I'm kind of looking for something to eat, um, you know, sometimes I can grab a can of these, this, and uh, warm it up. And, yeah. I don't mind it. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so, um, as you can see, these milk crates are the pillars for the, the shelving. And in each milk crate, there's uh, 24, there's 32 cans in each milk, but, uh, milk crate. So I've got three crates. So that's 96 plus another four here. There's 100 cans of, you know, Heinz and Campbell's chunky kind of soups. Does me fine. Um, over the other side, I've got, uh, going down the bottom here, I've got these harvest, um, they're kind of like, uh, um, they're, they're like a, um, like a casserole kind of thing. So this one's braised steak and onion. Um, this one's my, my favorite one. If I have to eat any of them, um, as I said, I'm not big on these kind of canned foods normally. Uh, I, I like to eat fresh food mostly. So, um, but you know, for, for, um, shit at the fan prepping, um, I think these are ideal, um, I don't know if they make these anywhere else in the world, but you know I'm sure everywhere else have got your own version of, of kind of like a um, casserole. And the reason why I like them is, 
you know, there's about 10% or 12% meat content. And so that's what I'm really looking for, you know, is the meat. Um, it's, you know, uh, you know, if, uh, you know, shit goes down, um, you know, probably the hardest thing is to get, to get will be meat. You know, I can grow a lot of my vegetables. Um, and so meat is something that I'm really going to be chasing. So yeah, um, there's 36 of these cans go into a milk crate and I've got a couple of crates here. So about uh, 70 odd, uh, cans there. And these are my long kind of term storage things. Um, another one is baked beans. Um, I've got some mixtures, different kinds of baked beans here, some organic beans, uh, beans with sausages, beans with bacon. Um, again, I don't eat a lot of baked beans, uh, but, um, you know, I don't mind them. So I keep a one milk crate of baked beans. Um, <coughs> um, other things, let's get around here. Uh, uh, obviously beans, um, I'm not, again, beans, I'm not really big on beans, except for these kind of beans. I, I, I like these um, four bean mix kind of beans. Um, they're good for bean salad. You just, you know, dice up an onion, add some, you know, vinegar and olive oil, uh, maybe di dice up a capsicum and you make yourself a nice bean salad. Good, good for you, high in fiber, so, Beans, I don't mind it like this. The dry beans, packet beans, um, I do have some uh, that we use for soups, but not a big bean person, mostly because in summer, beans are really easy to grow. And uh, so I grow beans um, and, you know, fresh every year. And, uh, and what's left over, I put into my freezer, which is another very important part of my prepping pantry is, is the actual freezer. Um, and uh, so other things are like canned fruit. Again, I prefer fresh, but you know, it's always handy to have some canned fruits stored. Um, I like my canned pineapple because I, I, I'll throw them into fried rice, stir fries, just to, um, you know, give a nice sweetness to it. You know, these kind of peaches, two fruit kind of ones. I use for ice creams, some oddball sliced mango, um, good for the smoothies every so often. Um, but uh, yeah, and then, you know, things like tuna is an obvious prepping item, um, you know, because, you know, th this is my favorite tuna. It's the uh, um, Serena, Serena tuna in olive oil, um, Italian style. This is um, this is my favourite tuna. Now, surprisingly, um, it's only become available in supermarkets probably for the last ten years. Um, but we've been buying this tuna for uh, as long as I've I can remember. You know, over thirty years or so. Um, and um, but uh, mostly it used to be in continental delis, but now it's available everywhere. And uh, um, I I think it's the best tuna you can get. Um, it's basically just tuna with olive oil um, or oil of some kind. Um, and another one I, I, I don't mind for um, salads is uh, the John West red salmon. Okay. Um, now you also got pink salmon, which is a lot cheaper than the red salmon. But to tell you the truth, if you're going to go for pink salmon, you might as well just go for um, a, a, a better quality tuna rather than pink salmon. Red salmon is um, the real stuff. It's expensive, um, especially if you buy it in cans like this, uh, in a large can. Um, it's a wild Alaskan red salmon. It can be pretty expensive, but um, because I like to use it in make a really nice tuna um, a salmon salad, um, I'm prepared to you know splurge on my my salmon. Same as the tuna. There are other, you know. I've tried these no no name brand kind of tuners, right? It's basically just mush in a can, um, and uh, uh, it's poor quality. I don't recommend them to eat like day to day. But hey, if you're um, storing for just long term storage, well, nothing probably nothing wrong with holding, um, you know, half a dozen of these cans just for 
like an insurance policy rather than ever actually having to eat. And if you've got a cat or like I do, I've got chickens. Uh, worst comes to worst, I'll just feed it to the chooks. Um, uh, these little tuners, uh, you know, little snack packed kind of tuners, they're okay when you want a little tuna sandwich. Um, so um, I only buy this stuff or, and most of the stuff that I buy is when it's on super special. You know, to me, I find that there's two kinds of specials in supermarkets. You've got your regular special, which might be 20% off, 30% off, something like that. And then you've got your super specials, which are at least 50% off. And so, you know, when I get these for under half price, that's when I stock up. And I'll usually get, you know, like um, 20 cans or something at a time. Uh, another thing is these Brunswick um, kippers. They're uh, boneless herring fillets. Um, you know, they're not bad, to tell you the truth. I, I don't really like the, the, the sardines in a can, but these um, herring fillets, um, because they're filleted and um, they're just uh, more palatable and, um, and you know, it's, it's as close you can get to catching a fish, basically, because it's, uh, you know, they're just whole fish, so it's not really processed food. So I, I, I like these for the pantry. Um, I don't eat many of them. I might eat one every six months, um, but I like to stock them. So I just keep an eye out for these when they're on special. Um, I try and stock up at least uh, half a dozen or so at a time and keep good stock of them. Because, you know, if, uh, if anything does go down and um, we go into a disaster sort of plan, um, the thing that you're going to be looking for most is, you know, if you're a meat eater, you're going to want food with substance rather than beans and rice and, and you know, canned um, soups you're going to be looking for meat and um, so you know well fish is one form of meat I suppose um, uh, yeah and then over here we got uh, well in this the same as the uh, the tuna got chicken in a can it's basically um, shredded chicken um, in various different sauces or whatever. It's just like uh, opening up a little can of chicken, uh, of tuna. Um, so again, I, 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 it's, I'm not really a big fan of this um, shredded kind of chicken, but um, I think it's a great thing to store um, for, you know, a, for a prepper. And, um, and, but only if you can get it really cheap. I got these, you know, for um, half price. And that's the only way I would have bought these. Um, I would never pay um, any any more than half price for these. Um, so yeah, it's worth waiting for these kind of things. And then when they do come, I've got uh, four, eight, 12, 16, 20. I just bought 20 cans in one go. Okay. Um, obviously, uh, spam is, uh, well, doesn't really need much introduction. Um, I, I, I don't mind spam. Uh, I might crack open a can once a month, um, but uh, come um, come in the time of need, spam is going to be an awesome thing to um, to have because uh, you know it's it's close to meat. You can eat it straight out of the can. You can do a lot of things with it. Um, one the one I, I keep four different flavors. Well. I got me regular spam, and I got the 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 low so, the low salt version, which is 50% less salt. And funny enough, it's still a lot of salt. So um, <laughs> when I'm feeling a bit guilty, I'll I'll, I'll use the 50% less sodium. Otherwise, I go for the full flavor. The other one is uh, what I think is a really good one is a turkey. Um, it's basically it's made with 100% white lean turkey, and um, so. It's, um, I, I don't mind this at all. Uh, just a good variation. You don't really get much, t you know, other, other things that have turkey in them. So, um, yeah, I think, you know, come shit at the fan if I really had to, you know, rely on this stuff to eat um, on a regular basis, then I'm going to enjoy having a mixture of turkey and, and regular spam. And um, one that I found uh, i've only got one left i tend to use quite often is um the bacon one uh it's bacon flavored i suppose uh the thing i like it yeah it's got that bacony 
flavor to it. So when you slice this up and you know fry it with eggs, um, it's kind of like having bacon and eggs. So um, it's not something I always use right now. I prefer real bacon, but um, you know, come time of the time, um, it's something that's going to be quite enjoyable. And and what I'm you know, you know what I mentioned before is uh, yeah, prepping is. You know, surviving is not just uh, physical surviving and getting the right foods and proteins and vitamins into you. It's also mental survival. And, and you know, uh, probably the ones that are going to last longest are the ones that can last in their head. And so if you're eating foods that's, that's satisfying you, that's making you feel good, um, then um, I think you'll, 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 you'll be much better off. And uh, another one which is uh, similar to spam, but it's more it's more of a ham. It's leg ham. Um, it's you know reasonably expensive to tell you the truth, but not really because if you take into account you go to a deli and you buy sliced ham, um, you'll find it's quite expensive anyway. So um, this is uh, 450 grams, um, you know almost half a kilo, and it's about the price of regular ham, half a kilo. But you know. It doesn't really have a use-by date. You can keep this on the pantry for, you know, many, many years. And uh, I think, you know, again, it's going to be one of those luxurious items that you can pull out and, and slice up and you got yourself some, you know, a real ham, cheese and tomato sandwich, you know. Um, uh, going up here, just regular things that I use. I don't go too crazy with. So like HP sauce, I, I'm, you know, it's I use it once in a blue moon. So I'll only have one, and when I when I open this up, I'll buy another one. But uh, um, soy sauce I do use quite often, so I've got three there. It's going down, so I'm due to get a few more of these. I like to keep at least six bottles of soy sauce just for my own use. Same with chili kind of sauces and you know your various sauces, smoky marinade and all that kind of thing, um, pastes. Um, like um, Indian cooking pastes, Rogan Josh and Madras paste. And, you know, I don't use it that often, but every so often it'd be okay. And, and say, if you didn't have meat and you had to make a stir fry, you wanted something different, you can have an Indian tasting stir fry vegetables just without the meat, if you couldn't access meat. Um, same with these things, the, the chicken kind of sauces, chicken tonight, canton satay chicken, uh, pineapple sweet and sour chicken, all these kind of different sauces. Um, yep, I, I, I don't mind these, so I just stock these. I um, might eat, you know, might use one up every three months, if that. And then, you know, just basic canned stuff. Um, bamboo shoots, water chestnuts for stir fries and stuff. Um, yeah, uh, go up one. So up here. Um, I hope I'm not boring you. Um, as I said, it's my first video I'm prepping, so I don't know how good this is going to go, but uh, yeah, but yeah, I'm going to give it a go anyway. So yeah, so you can see the the pillars for my um, for the shelving, they're open, so I can put mixed odd stuff in there. I've got some, you know, drinks. Uh, you know, it's good to get, you know, not just your regular kind of soft drinks that you enjoy, but actually um, some good quality juices uh, like this ocean spray it's a cranberry juice you know it's a it's a you know pretty good quality and I, I like this even you know I use this when um, you know I've got friends over sometimes and we might have a glass of vodka with uh, cranberries juice it's uh, it's quite nice and um, yeah so I use it as a mixer drink use it as a refreshing drink and but um, I think are really good drinks to rotate through your pantry to um, in case you you know in case emergency you don't just have water you've got actually um, you know good quality juices um, I'll get to my water maybe in another video um, it's over the other side <coughs> probably only going to have enough time for this um, this section here so you know things like cake mixers um, you know something prawn crackers uh bloody papa dams you know just for oddball things any time when i'm i feel like a little snack or something um something different if i'm having indian stir fry you know i'll crack open a packet of papa dams and fry them up same as the prawn crackers if i'm having a um 
uh, an Asian stir fry. Sometimes I might crack open a box and make make a big bowl of um, prawn crackers to um, as a starter. Um, some things that I think are ideal. This is my last packet. Fried shallot. Now, if you know shallots are pretty expensive when you you buy them fresh. These have been sliced up and then fried. They they last for a long time. Um, at least two years in the packet like this so um, but you know you can use this on so many things you can just sprinkle it on top of soups you can put it into casserole stews um, yeah you can just eat it like um, like potato chips um, they're really tasty um, I find that when I make a um, cup of soup I can I sprinkle a little bit on top and it just gives a little different texture a bit of a crunch texture um, sprinkle it on top of hamburgers um, uh, just uh, give you again a, a nice crunchy texture fried shallots um, I'm going to do a whole video on Asian foods from Asian grocery stores because um, I think it's one area that people just neglect is the Asian grocery stores because they have a lot of stuff like this dried up in packets um, and if you get to know what they are you you know it'll they really do fill up a lot of gaps in 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 your pantry that you wouldn't otherwise have um, yeah fried shallots um, they're very expensive fresh but amazingly cheap in a packet like this um, and when I buy them I usually I'll get a case of these and I've only got one left so um, other things obviously pepper I just buy the pepper and the peppercorns and I grind them up myself always got a stock of pepper mayonnaise some coleslaw dressing I don't go too overboard with anything like that um, uh, mustards um, gravies, some canned stuff, um, good quality salt. You know, I've got uh, plenty of cheap salt, but you know, this Himalayan pink salt, um, it's pink. And uh, yeah, it's from the Himalayas and uh, it's, you know, it's expensive, but it's um, quite nice actually. And, uh, you know, I like to use this on sprinkle on salads or when I just using straight salt. Um, this is actually nice salt and again it's it's you know little luxuries that you know can can make all the difference um, and yeah you're probably familiar with the canned butter um, this is uh, a product of New Zealand also available here in Australia it's um, yeah your, your red feather butter uh, I've seen a lot of videos and preppers getting into this um, this is uh, one of the best canned items that I've ever had in my, my uh, pantry, simply because it's just pure natural butter. And uh, funnily enough, um, I know it's, it can be pretty expensive, this stuff f in America, but you know, if you're a, an Australian prepper, we're you know, this is one thing that we're actually really lucky with, is the canned butter. Believe it or not, it's, it sells for the same price, even cheaper than um, the same size block of bloody um, fresh butter you buy at the supermarket. Um, so it's the same brand, um, same price, so you might as well just have it in cans and just use it whenever you want. Um, the difference with the Australian version to the American version, it, the ones that they send overseas, is that this is 454 gram net which is 454 grams is exactly, I'm pretty sure it's exactly one pound. Um, turn over here, 16 ounces, okay? Now in America, they their ones are 12 ounces. So we get four ounces more and the price is just crazy. Um, for a 16 ounce can um, here in Australia, it's $3.50. Now that's in Australian dollars. Um, so in American dollars, it's $2.50. Um, now, I'm sure that our American friends would freak out if they could buy 16 ounce can of red feather butter for $2.50. You'd see every pantry stocked up with hundreds of them, I, I reckon. Um, for some reason, you know, obviously we don't have to import it from as far as like other countries do. So um, <laughs> uh, we're really lucky with butter. And I, I, I really highly recommend um, any preppers in Australia is to source go and get this stuff and uh, you know if you're not sure where to get it well you go to the source which is uh, Ballantines they're um, they're in Port, uh, South Melbourne um, they're only about five minutes away from me so uh, I just rock up there and get myself a, 
a case at a time cost $82.50 for a case of 24 um, in case you're wondering and uh, and we're also um, if they're good enough for, to you they'll give you um, li lids as well so once you open the can you can pop one of these lids on and just to keep your um, butter clean um, so that's pretty cool um, other things speaking of dairy um, you know one of my um, milk crates have got um, you know just a mixture of milks uh, long life kind of milks but uh, some good quality milks rather than you know just you know just cheap milk um, so yeah I've got some arnet, uh, almond and coconut um, another almond and coconut uh, just a, a different variation to milks um, you got some um, keep some of this Nestle um, reduced fat cream comes in handy sometimes and up the top is uh, I, I go for a, a, a brand name rather than a cheap um, supermarket brand name I go for like Devondale this is uh, their two liter cartons of um, full cream milk um, I've got quite a lot here I've just got a fresh stock so yeah um, I don't mind this. I don't really drink it. I have a, a, my own milk that I prefer, the fresh milk that I prefer to drink. It's a specific brand, but um, I find that when I run out of milk and I can't get to the shop, these are fantastic. Uh, it's just full cream milk. That's fine. Um, but there's something else. Uh, what I do with these, I, I keep an eye on the um, expiry. These are still got uh, eight months, so plenty of time. But, you know, when, if I haven't used them up by the expiry date, uh, these are one thing with milk, you, I, I, you know, you're best to use them up by the expiry date. So even though, you know, they can have up to 12 months expiry. But if you can't use them, like me, I usually end up with um, half a dozen cartons that um, need to be used up too quickly. I make farmer's cheese out of it. Um, it's like a ricotta cheese. I'll, um, I'll definitely um, show you that recipe um, a little bit later and I'll give you my version of how I, I cook with a lot of my things. Um, I'm not a chef um, and I'm male. <laughs> um, I'm just a regular bloke. I'm not a, you know, I'm a scrapper by trade. I, I you know, I scrap electronics and um, scrap metal. So I'm um, probably the last person you would, you would think that would be um, in the kitchen um, cooking up foods, but um, you know, I do my best and I hope that um, You know, it'll um, help other you know guys that uh, Aren't really that good in the kitchen to to be able to whip up some some decent meals out of what they you know prep in the uh, In the uh, pantry. So finally just uh, skim off the top here Just oddball things like you know keep a stock of heat beads uh, Jiffy fire lighters um, obviously matches uh, heaps of matches, match boxes of matches. I even got some of these um, you buy off eBay. Uh, these uh, wind and water, water kind of matches. Uh, they're huge, huge things. And yeah, you know, so you're in extreme wind or whatever, you can still light it, and they've they got a little scratch. And you know, you buy about ten, and you get them pretty cheap. Um, you know, other little things like um, some preserving jars. I do do a little bit of preserving, not much, not certainly not as much as you'll, uh, you know, most preppers do, especially in America. Um, no, just mostly olives and uh, a few little bits and pieces. I'm not big on. Uh, I don't really, you know, it's really weird, but I don't really trust my own jarring or bottling or canning. Um, uh, for some reason, uh, you know, I'm just worried about botulism and stuff. And sometimes I've, I've preserved olives and then ended up throwing half of them away because I just couldn't bring myself to eat them because I thought, uh, you know, no, I better not. Um, but anyway, yeah, and just some toiletries and uh, air fresheners and powders. And up here, I've got a, a bit of a supply of toilet papers and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so that's basically, you know, my thing at the moment. Um, you know, and obviously uh, your pasta sauces and stuff like that. Oh, and um, forgot to mention, like salt. Get the uh, I get the cheap salt for um, just because I I preserve things. You know, something like olives, pickled olives and stuff. So I use it in that, and uh, it's got no use by date. So you can get as much as you want. 
Uh, yeah, and uh, other little things is like buckets. Um, buckets, I get these clean white food grade buckets. Um, a good place to get them from is uh, like Turkish kebab shops. Um, they go through a lot of yogurt and these buckets are all from yogurt. And so um, every so often I'll pop into one of them and I'll ask them if they can, um, you know, they've got any buckets and they'll give me them. They'll also give me the lids. And so they're food grade buckets for free. Just um, get them from the, um, those Turkish type of kebab shops. And uh, yeah, a good source of buckets. All right. Um, well, all this talk about food has kind of made me hungry now. Uh, yeah, so uh, I might go into the kitchen and make myself something to eat. But uh, yeah, this uh, red feather butter, um, it's just great stuff. And uh, yeah, um, probably one of my favorite items in the pantry. <clears throat> so if you're in Australia and uh, you, you want to know where to get this stuff from, and it's really cheap, it's $3.50 a can. And, uh, um, and you know, that's not much at all considering butter the same equivalent butter, just a little bit bigger, 500 gram butter is $4. So this is three fifty. So about the same price and you can actually keep it on your, on your um, shelf. Pretty awesome. All right, guys. Well, uh, I think I've covered what I wanted to talk about right now. Um, and yeah, I'll, uh, once I work out what I really want to talk about and then I'll go through uh, individual stuff and I'll go to um, other areas of my prepping I've got uh, a cabinet there for um, medical and other kinds of oddball things um, survival kind of things and I'll go out into the garage and show you um, uh, stuff I prep for my vehicle uh, including diesel and um, oil and things like that um, and then my garden I'll introduce you to my chickens and uh, which is a very important aspect of my prepping because it all blends in you know the chickens uh, provide eggs and they also provide um, fertilizer for the garden and and it's just and the garden provides food for the chickens and it's just one big circle you know and um, it's part of uh, you know trying to live as sustainably as possible in in the suburbs um you know where we're all you know if you live in the suburbs most suburbs are pretty limited with space so but you know i think you can really um utilize the space that you've got even on concrete you can grow stuff and I, i'd like to show you some of that um it's just coming it's springtime right now so um i'm just starting to get out in the garden and um prep for spring planting and uh, so I'd like to show you a bit more of that and um, yeah, and hopefully um, get to meet more preppers online. Um, yeah, and if you're from Australia, you know, say hello and uh, you know, we can, um, you know, we can share some information on where, where we can get stuff that uh, might be harder to get. Um, you know, unfortunately where it's not like America where you've got all kinds of, you know, bargains, um, you've got, discount shops you've got coupons all that we don't really got that sort of stuff so we rely on you know just supermarket specials and and that kind of thing so anyway all right well um keep prepping and um yeah and uh have fun and uh don't go overboard and um and uh yeah and just hopefully uh um everything that you use in your um everything in your pantry will be used up in normal regular circumstances you know hopefully we never really have to um rely on everything we've got in our pantry f you know but uh you know the way the economy is uh they can't just keep printing money and um expect it's all going to keep it's going to be okay i mean you know all economies and all great things come to an end and uh, the way they're printing money like it's going out of fashion, um, uh, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if, uh, we're, you know, we're getting very close to a, um, uh, some kind of, um, you know, financial crisis, you know, and I'm not just talking about Australia or America, I'm talking about a worldwide thing this time around. I think uh, for it to um, come good again, um, something's got to, it's got to collapse and, um, they've got to rebuild, you know, uh, a, a new world, um, financial order, I suppose is, is in order. Um, so, uh, 
you know, um, so yeah, without going, you know, getting you too um, freaked out or um, too, um, you know, crazy in your prepping and oh, I've got to rush out and spend thousands of dollars, you know, just prep as you would, you know, it's just a, a regular kitchen pantry, just upscaled a little bit, you know, um, you know, uh, normally a kitchen pantry might have one or two jars uh, of uh, sauerkraut, um, but you know, I, I basically stock according to the use by date. This is two years, so I can use this up in two years, not a problem. So uh, what I want is to use up some of it until the next special and be able to get another 20 jars and and then go again, you know, rather than um, ending up having to eat the whole lot in one go. Um, that's not my style, you know, I'll just, yeah. Anyway, I, I think I've carried on a little bit enough um um yeah so uh keep keep prepping guys and uh um yeah and um just want to say hello to everyone out there and uh um hopefully uh, i'll have some other videos up shortly and we can um we can all you know start chatting and um and uh yeah all right ciao